Palladium. Palladium and Palladium. And I don't like their later books. I don't like their I don't know what it is. It's just maybe it's my taste, but and you know what, as a DM, right? It's fun to build your own world, make your own little map, and these guys are there and those guys are there. Kind of like you know, fantasy authors when they invent a little fantasy story. They've got their own little map of where stuff is and where people might go to do things and over this area is bad. And you know, you can read the Michael Moorcock books or Robert E. Howard books and pop your people into that those areas too. Um, like in the Conan stories, uh, sorcerers or wizards are, are, are pretty mean, right? Like you're, you don't want to mess with them, right? And usually they're like in the employ of a king or something as a psychic. Sometimes they try to take over kingdoms, you know, this kind of stuff. It's not like this little, you know, little annoying person that like you're going to kind of like, they have a few tricks and they're going to kill you. Like that's the Robert E. Howard thing in the Hyborian age. They're like, and they're, also usually considered highly evil, like in the High Age. They're always like opposing the good of Conan. Whereas in some Dungeons and Dragons and some books and some series that I don't think much of, like Thieves World and some other stuff that I tried and didn't like, it's almost like they make magic like common, like Walmart. You know, you're just gonna pick out like another spell du jour and a couple other spells over here. And that's that's I think retarded. I don't think you want to do that. Because if you think about how business is in the real world, right? Like any technical advantage is like graspingly defended, right? Like you don't want others to know about it. And that's where the Jack Vance stories, like the Tales of the Dying Earth are very good because wizards, they don't understand the spells. They have a spell book that they found in some ancient crypt or something like that. And they might have one or two spells that they can read and program into their brain and they can execute the spell and it does some crazy stuff. They're usually pretty powerful, right? Like one is the prismatic spray, and that will just basically kill anyone with like a thousand little um, darts of energy. Like I don't know, really know how it's supposed to be, but each one's a different color, and, and each one might have a different bad effect on whatever it hits. But it pretty much kills anything. And um, in that book series, the wizards are jealous of each other, and they are, they don't share spells, and they like try to capture and force each other and torture each other to like you know, get whatever spells that other person has, including our items, right? Like they'll have some magical items. They don't understand how the item works. They just found it in some ancient crypt or they read about it in some portfolio they read and then they went to the crypt and got it. And um, that I think is a more is a more kind of cooler model, right? Because like same thing in the Conan things, there's like different, that, that's one of the, th the coolest things about the Conan stories is they have like little rings. Like there's like the black square, which is some badass group of, magic users and they're opposed by like the black ring or the whatever and um you know they don't talk they're not friends they're in different areas they're just like stay with us and we'll stay away from you that's it right there isn't like a little wizard university or any kind of crap like that like in the terry pratchett books the discworld books they have that and that's kind of like i think a little goofy like you have a university of wizards it's kind of like whatever but even in that like the top wizard of the university is there because someone took his place. It's like a real hierarchical kind of thing, which is kind of cool in its own little way, but um, they kind of make them like, you know, lazy, mad scientists. It's kind of funny. And um, so you can have all kinds of combinations, but like, just try to think like in, in a little bit, you know, I don't want to say you want to make it real because it's a fantasy world, but, <laughs> but you know, the way humans are, right. If there's some, uh, if there's some wizard or something, it's like the church people or the clerics, right? Might not like that. I might threaten them, right? Because they're kind of like in the one area and things are good. So they might declare that a heresy or whatever, right? So that wizard might want to kind of keep it quiet. And, you know, who knows? Maybe your characters, your, your team, your gang finds out about that person. Or they have something that the clerics want, or they have something the king wants, right? And they want to shut you up, so they start sending ninjas at you. You know, there's all kinds of fun stuff. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm telling you, if Hollywood ever got smart and put people in a room and uh, started to uh, write down these sessions, because, I mean, some of these sessions, I mean, in one session, you'd fight zombies, uh, maybe some kind of evil uh, magic user person that uh, can make golems, which are like kind of like walking 
killing machine statues. Um, you might have to go on a ship somewhere and fight off some kind of sea monsters and go underneath to some sunken castle way below using some magic item that you borrow from whatever the sea elves and have to do something down there to get something that's the only thing that can nullify the abilities of some other person that's about to summon up Hastur or, or a servitor of Hastur, right? And this thing, if it's summoned up, will be so powerful and evil that that guy will be able to take over the entire you know, kingdom and just lay waste to armies. And you have a time limit, right? you got like three days until the person figures it out. Or maybe there's a team been sent ahead of you to get the item. And you have to head them off and kill them and get the item and destroy it. And the only way to destroy it is to take it somewhere else, into some void or whatever, or some other crazy thing. So all these kind of things, right? That's like one, like, you know, four or five hour session. And that could be like probably a trilogy of movies right there. Just all the stuff I just described. So if Hollywood gets, stop hiring people that don't know about fantasy, that don't know about role-playing games, that have like very limited imagination, that see things in terms of like, you know, toys on the shelf. And like, they, they kind of see it from like, you know, a thousand feet away. Get some people that are into the, these creative things so you can put some stuff on the screen that people haven't seen before, things that are interesting, but it still has a story. It's still going somewhere. There's still a reason for people doing this and that and the other. And who knows? Maybe there's someone in the group that's like a spy. They have their own little agenda, right? Like they want to get the item for themselves, and they want to be the one to summon up the servitor of Hastur or something, whatever evil spirit thing can make them able to take over entire regions and lay waste to armies, right? So... Um, you know, and then there's like, you know, if that's too, you know, big game for you, you can scale it down. You can just have, you know, um, you can say the town says people have been disappearing over there in that, 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 that valley, right? There's something in that valley. Maybe there's like, you know, some kind of uh, vampire lady over there, or maybe there's something that's been woken up by kids that went into like some place they weren't supposed to and they messed around with stuff and it woke something up. You know, kind of like a Stephen King novel. It woke something up that was, you know, sleeping and it didn't now it's hungry, right? This kind of thing. Or maybe somebody discovers a magic ring. I mean this the possibilities are so endless. Like, you know, if, especially if you've read some of the Moorcock stuff or the um I mean the Michael Moorcock stuff has like a whole hierarchy of evil gods that don't like each other fighting a whole hierarchy of people on the side of law, right, versus the chaos. And the main character is a champion of, like, chaos that defects and starts helping the guys a lot. He doesn't really like them either, right? He's just trying to be happy and kind of like, but people always, you know, kill off his girlfriends. They kill off, try to kill off his friends. And then he's like the lot, instead of being like the dumb barbarian like Conan, although Conan's actually supposed to be really smart and quick-witted, but this guy's like the opposite, right? Like he's like the trained sorcerer, but he abhors magic kind of, and he's sick of everything, and he's sick of the decadence of his own people. And you know, it's kind of like a, a little bit self-hate in the thing, that which is the part I don't like, but the world building is insane. Like he has, he's part of a race of sort of elf guys called Melnibonians or Melnibidae. I don't know, my sister says it's Melnibidae, but I always read it as Melnibone. And the island kind of ruled the world and were powerful magic users and fought other magic user. You know, in later stories, they, you know, fight other magic user kind of like the guys that are more powerful on this continent or something or the gals over there. And then there's upstarts that are like the humans, you know, they're sort of on the, on the upswing in the world. And there's wars upon wars all over the place and ancient things going on. But they like will travel planes like that. Like he'll like go he'll zap onto another area. And then what you figure out is the author ties it in. Michael Morcock ties it in where like the other book series is about a guy who's a different aspect of this eternal champion. It's sort of like a, a fighter for like one of these gods. You go into his dimension in his world and help him do something because it needs more than one eternal champion's power all added up. And then there's a third or a fourth one in one of the books that's really blows your mind. Because they have to fight something, a pair of you know magic users that have become so powerful, they're basically going to cause an imbalance in the whole thing, right? They've gotten so big, they're like these alien sorcerers of some sort. But there's a whole bunch of like sidekicks, right? There's like this one guy that's the snake charmer. There's one. They're all warriors. They're all super fit and they're all able. But like one guy 
they're going to get eaten by all these like snakes and he just like charms them right it's kind of tacky but if he wasn't there even elric would be dead right because they're just outnumbered they don't know what to do with these snakes they don't you can't really hurt them they're just whatever going to get you um and then um but it's it's really good you should really check out that elric series because it's um the books are only like 200 pages but the way the guy has the ability to with very few words lay out a whole bunch of imagery which is awesome and you can kind of make it your own like that's part of the fun of like reading as opposed to like watching a movie is that you, you have to visualize these characters in all your own way so you can kind of make you know it's a, you're adding to the thing because you're filling all the details with your own mind and that's really awesome i think um and uh, i don't know what happened with that author later on because after like 1990 or whatever, or even probably like earlier, whenever he finished the Haw the Hawkmoon series, the Corm series, and the Elric series, like the later Elric books were just all like, dude, like thumbs down. I don't know if he like, got like a ghostwriter or what, but like the writing was just tremendously awful. Like I remember reading one called The Silver Warriors, and it was just like, I was like, dude, is this even Moorcock or is this some like, He's just like in the Bahamas drinking drinks, and he hired some hack and gave him an outline, right? He said, ah, screw it, put my name on it, I'll make a few bucks, you know, just to get me through the next year or two until I get some new ideas. It was just like really out there. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, um, but I mean, he'll come up with like, you know, he'll have something that one of his magic users will summon will have a traditional enemy that the other magic user will summon to fight that group of super powerful, you know, demonic spirits. Like, it's just crazy. And then, like, you know, he has ancient, you know, kind of super science sorcerers that um, you have to figure out the puzzles to get out of their little sanctum that you've been imprisoned in. And it's all kinds of fun stuff, really. Stuff, you know, stuff with a little bit more complexity than you see in most of the TV shows, but it's kind of fun complexity because you're like damn i you know the guy he's got certain abilities and powers but he's got to like use his mind if he doesn't do it do it and do it fast and figure it out fast you're dead anyway right so it's like time is of the essence and um it's just again and again and again just awesome stuff um so again if you want one book you know just grab a book i don't know how much this thing is online 10 bucks five bucks maybe a little more palladium rpg is awesome um, they have a thing during Christmas time where you get like a grab bag. I'd recommend it just cause you know, I, I don't follow the small guys just cause they're small. I'd follow a small guy cause he makes a, a superior product. that's got everything built in that gives you an awesome starting point to start gaming. And, um, you know what? Take a break from TV, the net in your phone for a while and do a little role playing game with a friend or two. You'd be surprised how awesome it could be it develops on its own it takes a snowball effect and um it's a trip i mean you, they could make you know you probably have more creativity more different enemies and more awesome fights in a few hours or whatever a few sessions and that's the only thing that's funny is that time will, will warp you will have like a four-hour session playing role-playing games remember the first hour you just set up your character right you're just trying to see if your character is what it could be a lizard person could be a lizard girl could be a whatever a human whatever what kind of things, what kind of weapons, what kind of spells, what kind of this, what kind of that. That's the first hour. The next three hours, and, and you'd be like, damn, it's like 10 p.m. already? I got to go. And it's like you barely got started. And then, like, the next week's the same thing. You barely get to, like, the boat you're supposed to take to go somewhere. So um, it's an awesome kill time. You know, if you're ever, like, snowed in, bring a book like this, man. It's freaking awesome. Um, we'll talk about more stuff. I got to cut this off. I'm gonna have to already slice this thing into three 15-minute segments. It's 44 minutes. But um, happy gaming, happy creativity. Um, look for good art, and don't think all this stuff since the '90s been any good. And this stuff, most of this good stuff before the '80s got done, just unbelievable. I mean, I'll be cons I'll, I'll I'll be showing you guys more stuff. And it's not that you know the new stuff, but it's like you know chicken nuggets versus fine filet mignon or whatever your favorite meal is really good stuff here and uh, i'm just gonna keep throwing this stuff out just so that the next generation can kind of you know get some good tidbits and see some quality steaks versus the chicken nuggets they try to 
we're at the, the door of the